Hi everyone and welcome back to Utah CL at Ninja where we help to connect the dots between your business and your customers. My name is Tristan and today we're going to be talking about building a free website using Google Sites. Now if you're familiar with building a site on Google My Business, and this is very similar, only these don't have any kind of requirement that you need to be connected to a business or anything like that. It actually has a few fewer options than what you'd have on the Google My Business site. We primarily use these to make quick landing pages, contact forms, and we also use them for our Bluetooth beacons. So for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to quickly build a Google site and we're going to build a portfolio for my dog. Now he's six years old, it's time that he become an influencer or something because he still doesn't have a job and he's totally freeloading and we can't have that. So our site's going to be pretty simple. We're going to add in some pictures, some information about his social media following, we're going to add an about me section, and we're going to add a contact form so that way potential sponsors can reach out and contact us. Now I already have my text written up so we can skip over the whole boring watching a guy try to type on YouTube thing, just for the record. You know how difficult it is to type when somebody's watching you type? Imagine doing that but knowing that your videos get like thousands of views every month? It's, it's nerve wracking so be nice to people who try to type on video, it's not easy. Now while you're watching that in the background, let me tell you a little bit about the options that we have for designing the site. The first thing that we want to look at is the theme. This mostly just affects the format of the header, but it also lets you adjust some styles and fonts and some colors and things like that. After that we have pages. These are just the pages that we want to include on the site. Now since we're making just a single page site, we don't want to add any extra pages to this one. But what we can do is we can add links to external sites, so like to his Instagram and to his YouTube channel. Now if I don't change the default image here in the header, which I think looks fine, my wife and my designer will kill me, so we're going to go ahead and change that. You'll notice that we do have a few different layouts available for the header. Again, I like the default, so we're going to go ahead and leave that as is. But when we go to change the image, then you'll notice we have a lot more options. So let me explain these really quick. Gallery is just a series of free stock images that you can use. Adding an image by URL lets you pull an image from another website, which would be like Facebook. Search lets you do a Google search for that image, and then you can pull those pictures from there and use them on your website. And then your albums and Google Drive are images that you've uploaded to these platforms previously. You can also just click the upload option and directly add the image to the site if you don't want to mess around with all of that. In our case, we're just going to use some pictures that we got off of Facebook. To finish the header, we're just going to change the default text to something that quickly and clearly tells the visitor where they are. You can also add your logo to the header by mousing over where it says enter site name. And just so you guys know, if you leave this part blank and like don't add any logos or anything, then it will just disappear. It's not going to show up on the published site. So Chimpa has a small social media following where he destroys dog toys as quickly as he can and that's what we're trying to communicate right here in the header. Okay, now to build out the rest of the site. We have some basic elements. We have text boxes, images, embedded code, and we can also add elements from our Google Drive. To add each of these options, all you need to do is click on it. And then to rearrange or edit those elements, all you need to do is click on the options that are going to be on the left hand side of that element. And you'll find that just by mousing over the element. We also have some pre-made layouts that we can use to quickly add elements and then to also edit them. Now I want to use two of these. One of them is going to be a place for text and the other is going to be a small gallery that we're going to place beneath that. So let me add in the text real quick. All right, and now for the gallery. I just want to add a few pictures in here that really tell the story of who Chimpa is. But my wife said nothing of him passing gas or marking every tree, bench, and trash can in the park. So we're just going to use these ones. So fun story, the day that we adopted him, we took him back to my parents' place for Thanksgiving and he pooped in their living room. Now, it was a big poop. It was in fact so big that we managed to blame my sister's dog for it, arguing that there's no way that so much poop could come out of such a little puppy. And since they don't watch any of my videos, I can go ahead and confess this here, but we did manage to get my little sister to clean up the poop for us, so win for us. All right, so now that we have the layouts down, we wanna add some custom stuff. Below the layouts, on the right-hand side of the screen, we have some more design elements. We're going to add a divider to mark the next section of content. We're going to add a text box to identify it as the follower information. And then we'll add another divider below that. And that's where we're going to put the contact form. The pitch deck or the audience information was made using Google Slides, which is just their version of PowerPoint. And the contact form was made using Google Forms. Now we can preview the site by clicking on the little eye symbol at the top of the page. You can also see how the site will look on different size screens like tablets and mobile phones. And that's going to be really handy for you because then you can make sure that the content looks the way that you want it to look, no matter how the visitor is actually viewing the page. 
I did decide to go back and add a YouTube video to the page. I'm still not super happy with how it looks, and so I think I'm going to go and I'm going to change that. I think I'm going to use one of the other layout options to see if I can find a way to make it fit a little bit more uh, uniformly with the rest of the site. The next steps after this would be to install your Google Analytics. You do that by clicking on the three dots next to the Publish button, selecting Site Analytics, and entering your ID number. You get the ID number when you create the property in Google Analytics, and that's pretty simple and straightforward, so we're not going to cover it in this video. You can also add in your favicon, which is the little picture that shows up at the top of the page. And you can also link this site to your own domain or purchase a domain from Google. This is a little bit more expensive than I'd normally like to spend on something like this. And if you do want to buy a domain, I would suggest that you get it from like Namecheap. You'll find an affiliate link for that in the description. But you can get your domains there for like 99 cents instead of like 10 or 12 or 20 dollars that you'd pay here. So uh, just keep that in mind. And again, since we're not doing any of that, we're just going to hit the publish button. Now, hitting the publish button doesn't actually publish the site. What this does is it will take you to the publish settings. So again, you can attach your own domain to the site. You can adjust the site's privacy settings and also the site's URL. So add in your URL, but we typically wouldn't recommend that you mess with any of the other settings here. Mostly because we still want Google to be able to index the site, which means that it will show up in search and we don't want to put any privacy settings on here because we don't want to limit people's access to the site. We want them to come, we want them to look at everything, and we want them to fill out the contact form. So once all that's done, we hit publish again, and now the site is actually published. And there it is. We just built and published an entire website in less time than it took me to eat my Pop-Tarts this morning. Now, if for whatever reason you want to take the site down, just go back to the builder, click on the little arrow next to where it says publish, and then you'll see the option to unpublish the website. What this will do is it will remove it from Google search. The publish setting option just takes us back to the publish settings again, and you can adjust anything that you'd like to from there. But that's it, a quick and easy way to build a website for free. Now there are a few ways that we would use these websites. I really like the idea of building simple one page designs on this platform. You can add other pages, you can do more with it and build out the rest of your content, but typically if you're gonna build out an entire website, then you're going to want access to other features that you're not going to have access to on here. And so you want to switch over to something like WordPress or Weebly or something like that, simply so you can have access to those other features like, you know, email capture, contact forms and things like that. You can hard code those things in or you can use the embed code option, but it's just adding in a lot of extra work. And the more moving parts that you have for something like this, the more likely it is that it'll break. So just something to keep in mind. But if you're building like a landing page with a Google form attached to it, if you're building out a single page website, a temporary website, like what we used while we were rebuilding our main website, we use something like this. Or for something like an event or like a party or something like that you're going to do, then I think these work really, really well. Another place we've had a lot of success with these is for our proximity marketing campaigns. We've noticed that since they're built on a Google property, they tend to have much greater reach in regards to the notifications appearing. And we can adjust them on the fly and it's free. And so if anything does go wrong, then we can throw it away and we don't have to feel bad about starting over. But I think that covers everything. If you guys do have any other questions for me, please leave them in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you still like sending any free toys to my dog, fill out the form on the site. You'll find a link to that in the description as well. And thank you very much for watching through the end. My name's Tristan from Ninja, where we help to connect the dots between your business and your customers. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.